Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and I'm so glad you could take time out of your day to come and join me. And, once again, I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy Marchintosh. Now, in the first Marchintosh video for 2024, I installed Sorbet Leopard on the Paramac G5 Quad. You can go back and, and take a look at that if you wish. Today I'm doing something similar. It is an OS installation, but rather different. What's running behind me is not the quad. That is my dual <coughs> processor, two separate processors, 1.8 gigahertz, Power Mac G5, from late 2003. And going to run into something I, I think is kind of interesting. Uh, when I first got this machine, I think it had an installation of Tiger on it. I put an installation of Leopard. I redid a lot of those. But there's something that's missing. The original operating system, 10.2 Jaguar. And, and there's a trick to this. When Apple first released the Power Mac G5s. It was in late June 2003. Jaguar was nearing the end of its time as the primary Mac OS operating system. What they released though, they had to release a very separate version of Mac OS 10.2.7 Jaguar because the original Jaguar did not have hardware drivers for G5s. It simply wouldn't work. You would find if you had one of these machines, if you took uh, a retail Jaguar install disk, it would not install. Certainly wouldn't run. All right. Apple never released those on a retail disk. They were only available in the uh, software restore CDs that came along, DVDs that came along with Jaguar. So what I've had to do is to go to Macintosh Garden, download the ISO file of the contents of a restore CD, I'll restore DVD, excuse me, because it's too big for a CD. And I am now going to attempt to burn that to a DVD. Now, there, there's one interesting thing to mention about that. In the initial release of the G5, Apple released a single 1.6 gigahertz, a single 1.8 gigahertz, and a single, so 2.0, I, I forget exactly. However, about November, this was late June, in late November, Apple updated the line. They dropped the price on the 1.6. They discontinued the single 1.8. And they added this machine, the dual 1.8. Now, that was late November. Panther had come out in late September. And so you would think this would, this would take Panther? No. This machine, of course, had been in, in active development well before uh, Panther came out. Panther only came out about three weeks, I think, prior to the release of this machine. So this machine, once again, shipped with 10.2.7 and restore disks that would restore it to 10.2.7. There shouldn't be any real difference in the OS itself. The difference really should be, and I don't know for sure, I've never run it. Uh, we'll find that out, I guess. The difference 
would be in the fact that this version has the drivers to make the machine work. Now I'm taking with one other thing since we have the dual processor, uh, excuse me, dual display setup on the G5 desktop there. When you're running dual displays on the most modern Mac operating systems, the screensaver on the displays is synchronized so that each display is running the same screensaver at the same point of progress. If you look behind me, you'll see the two displays are completely different. It's kind of cool, actually. That's the Cosmos uh, screensaver, something I had always enjoyed very much back in the day. Okay, so if you want to follow along with the process of installing this vintage operating system, and maybe more to the point, see if it actually works, please stay tuned. Okay, here we're in front of the 30-inch Apple Cinema display, which uh, is not delivering the dual link signal that it needs. Uh, now remember, of course, the aluminum Apple Cinema displays were released alongside the late 2005 Power Macs, which are all PCIe. The earlier Power Macs still had AGP graphics cards. Uh, none of which could deal with the dual link. I tried using the adapter and a couple of other bits of conversion technology to take the mini display port that comes out of the adapter, convert it to full display port, and then convert that to DVI. Uh, it didn't work. Well, anyway, to check out the provisions that I've made, First of all, I went into Disk Utility, which is open here, <clears throat> and I partitioned the Tiger drive so that we have a Tiger HD and a Jaguar HD. If we look here, we will see that the Jaguar HD is about 50 gigabytes, which is way more than it needs, and <clears throat> Tiger is 100. 55 available, 182 gigabytes total, which is probably more than Tiger needs, too. All right. Uh, so that's going to be the target onto which we will install. But first, what we've got to do is to create the DVD itself. <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do here is go to the File menu, select Open Disk Image. This ISO file is the installer. And you can see here that it now shows up in the, in the left here. Uh, we have, uh, hopefully we have a disk in the drive. Select the image to burn. And it's ready to burn. Okay, uh, slowly, 2.4 times. Okay, I'm gonna end this clip right now because uh, you don't need to sit here while it burns. This is going to take a while. Stay tuned. Okay, then. Time has passed. Uh, in fact, a little over a day has passed. Uh, the DVD I burned uh, on the Dual 1.8 didn't really work. Uh, in fact, it, it just didn't burn completely. I had the same problem when I switched this machine. Now, this is obviously a newer machine. It's got a newer and much better DVD burner in it. But the same thing happened. So what I did was to stop using DVD RWs. Now we've had some trouble when I was installing Phoenix, which was the primary example. Using DVD RWs just didn't work. So I had some DVD Rs. I tried those and they burned on both machines. I put the DVD that I burned on the Dual 1.8 in and tried to boot it up and it booted but it booted to a blue screen and just sat there. Alright, 
So again, thinking that maybe there's something wrong with the disk, I went to here. I had a fresh download of the ISO. Uh, I went through the same process here. When you do that, by the way, uh, this will burn at 16 times, a much, much faster and less painful process. Uh, okay, and again, I have already done that, and in fact, I tried to boot that DVD on the Dual 1.8. Same issue. And at this point, I had no idea what to do or where to go. Finally, just, just as a thought, I decided to try unplugging one of the two displays. And now this is, this is old software. Maybe that installer just doesn't quite know how to deal with two newer displays like that. So, we are now going to go back to the Dual 1.8 from late 2003, and we're going to try to boot it up again. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back to the Dual 1.8. Uh, you can see this little bit of black over here. Yeah, the cursor won't go over there because that monitor is no longer on. Uh, that's the 23-inch Apple Center display, so we just have the uh, 20 inch, uh, the 30 inch, excuse me. All right, I'm going to go into system preferences, check out startup disk, and it does show up. Okay, that's a good thing. Now I'm going to reboot it, holding on the option key. just to see what kind of options we have available when we get there. Come on. You can do it. All right. And there we go. Okay, we've got Oh, we have four options. Ah, uh, yes, the install DVD does contain a copy of the Apple hardware test, so that's listed as a separate bootable item. So, in typical with the open firmware Power Max, we got to wait forever for this little clock thing to go away while it tries to find other options, I guess. <coughs> I don't know what's up with my voice tonight. Pardon me for that. There's been a lot of talking in this video, and there still will be. Okay. Fingers crossed. All right, so we should be booting into it now. Waiting on the progress wheel. There it is. We should know in a matter of seconds. Of course, this this is a DVD, and it's a slowish DVD burner reader, so it will take time. Okay. Ha 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 ha! I'll be darned. Disabling the second display worked. I don't know why, really. Okay, so selecting English for the main language. reading packages. This is going to take a long time, folks. <laughs> All right. Continue. Yeah, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to go back for a sec because you can see here. You can install this version of macOS on any of the following computers, Power Mac G5. And at the time that this was released, these were the only Power Mac G5s. Because this, this, remember, was 2003. Okay. There's so many things here that have not changed. Okay. So it's not letting us go on to Leopard or Tiger if I went back into disk utility and formatted those drives, which obviously I'm not going to do. Uh, but this is why this drive exists. Okay. I'm going to customize. I do have a Lexmark printer. I doubt that I'll ever print to it. That's not necessary. Fonts for different languages we don't need. Asian fonts we don't need. Now, localized files. A whole bunch of countries that we don't need. We're going to install the BDS subsystem. Okay, extra application. Acrobat Reader, iTunes, and iMovie. Well, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, we install. All right, I will try to keep track uh, of how long this takes, but I won't make you sit through it. Stay tuned. Interim report. Uh, this, up to this point, is flying along. We're about five minutes into actually starting the install, and it's saying nine minutes left. Uh, <clears throat> That's pretty cool. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, it's saying less than a minute. We are eight minutes in right now. I'll keep the clock running until we're uh, booted up to the setup screen. Okay, here's a restart. I can't believe how fast that was. Maybe it's not that surprising. The only other time I think I've ever installed Jaguar was on uh, a sawtooth with the original optical drive that came with a sawtooth, uh, which could read DVDs, but it was painfully slow. So, yeah, this is, this is better. Okay. Looking good. Nine minutes in now. The keyboard uh, is just going to be able to mute the sound. As I'm assuming we're going to get a welcome video. Or maybe we're just going to get a blue screen. Oh, here we go. Yep. Nope. It won't. Okay, the only welcome video that I've ever had a problem with as far as copyright strikes is Panther. But I think I'm going to pause it here while this plays through. Stay tuned. Okay, so that's starting to quit now. United States. The registration, you know, I keep wondering. What would happen if I actually registered this? Would it actually go to... Uh, a server in Apple and they would see that somebody is trying to register a copy of 10.2.7 Jaguar who knows oh yeah Okay, so it 
So yeah, command quit. I was trying to remember what the keyboard combination was for that. All right, I'm going to fill in all this information. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Well, this is interesting. This is exactly what was happening when I tried to boot into the installer uh, with the second display connected. Huh. What happens if I unplug this? Nothing. We're going to have to reboot again. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. Now, that's interesting. Um, I am quite sure that Jaguar would have support for dual monitors. It has to. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it's because of the dual link DVI connection on the primary monitor. Now, it actually would probably make more sense to disconnect the 30-inch and just go with the 23. It would look a little more normal. Uh, all right. Well, I can play around with that. I, I also wonder if I were to connect a different monitor that doesn't require dual-length DVI, um, would I be able to get two displays? You know, something to fiddle with. Okay. But one thirty inch display will be plenty. Okay, now when I did reboot it, I got a warning to set up internet access. Yet, of course, we see here we have internet access. Now here, here's something to. Startup Classic. I may not have OS 9 installed. I may very well not have OS 9 installed. Well, that's okay. I probably will. Alright. Start disk options. We've got Jaguar, Tiger, Leopard, okay. Fans are ramping up. Yeah, 12, 1280 by 800. Now the thing is, if I connected the 23 instead of the 30, we should, we should get a, a, a higher resolution, certainly. All right. But in any event, you know, there's a lot of things to fool around with. Uh, I think at this point <clears throat> we can wrap up this video because the big point here was to get this very specific G5 only version of Jaguar installed. And we did it. Uh, from the quick look I've taken around, there doesn't seem to be a difference. I mean, it does have iMovie with it. about iMobi. 3.0.3. Okay. It's a fairly up to date. Uh, quit it. And iTunes. Let's see what we've got for iTunes. be any. Go to the iTunes library, there'll be nothing in it. Okay. Because all I want to do is get iTunes 4. All right. And we've got iPhoto 2. Interesting. 
sure I don't have a digital camera to connect. I just want to see about iPhoto here. iPhoto 2. Okay, okay, interesting. You know, I, I should... Is this thing frozen? No. Now we can quit iPhoto. Okay. Uh, I think that's enough playing around. I think we, we will end the video at this point uh, with this successful installation of 12.7.2. We'll take that last look at about this Mac because I think it's kind of cool. Version 10.2.7 G5. Very different, very specialized. Okay. Now, I don't know if there's going to be another video about this operating system. It depends on what kind of interesting things I may discover about it. But you know, it, it this this may be the end of it right here. Be good to other people; they need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. We can accomplish so much good in this world, but we have to start by being good to ourselves. We can make this world a better place. It is not yet. So please take very very good and careful care. All right, uh, the plan for next week's video at this point is a report, maybe just an interim report on Sorbet Leopard. Uh, then back into uh, more normal content. I've got some more display videos, uh, Apple display videos coming up. Uh, more Mac Mini content. There will be more PPC content. There's, there's a lot coming. So until those things are up and available on the channel, this has been Broken Electronics.